Hi everyone, we've got a nice spring scene today so we're going to concentrate on, on doing some spring greens and it's got a really nice sky with the light shining through here. Okay, nice easy draw. So you've got this horizon line which is slanting away slightly. You've got the line of the field, the line of the front bank. I've given a rough, a rough indication as to where the shrubbery is coming behind this big tree here and a rough indication of shrubbery here. I've popped in where the daffodils are coming through and then I've very lightly masked out a few daffodil heads so um, I don't know if you can see on here you can I've just it's just a few random dabs I've not gone into it looking like a daffodil flower and then a few lighter leaves here because there's some light shining through here and I quite like that. Okay, colours wise, let's come back out. Cobalt blue, cobalt blue and burnt sienna to make a grey. Some raw sienna. So those two have got water in. This one's not, it's just raw sienna on its own. Permanent rose with a bit of water in, some spring green. So I've got lemon yellow and cobalt blue, and then I've got sap green, and then I've got some neat sepia ready as well. Okay, we get some water onto the sky. So I'm going to come all the way down to the horizon line. Just making sure I've got everywhere with the water. And make sure my brush is nice and clean. Pick up some cobalt blue. And come in from this side. I want you to leave the little bit of light and we can pull out a little bit of light if we need to as well. See there's a little bit of light towards the horizon so we're just going to leave a little bit of a gap so that white can blend down. Okay, I've missed a tiny bit of water just around here. I don't want this to be hard, so I'm just bringing in a damp brush. Just so I capture that there, just to soften that in. It's not wet, just damp. brush a bit of a rinse. I want a little bit of grey in the sky but not too much. Make sure you give it a little bit of a stir because it does tend to settle. I'm just concentrating on the top. Left section.
and a little bit just in here. Okay, I'm going to swap down to a number six. Make sure that the brush is quite dry. I'm going to pick up that same grey. Just going to dab off a little bit. What I want is to create these very distant trees. I want them to be quite soft. So if you dab off, that just makes sure it's not going to run too far. And it's giving that sense of distance. Rinse my brush again. I'm going to dab into the sepia. That's pretty much neat. I'm just going to bring a little bit in this side. So this is where I can see the twiggy bits through the bigger tree. So I want to start to create that with a soft effect. So you can do a few dabs, you can do a few branches. You don't want this to be too dense though. You want to still be able to see through it. Obviously you're going to come to a point here where it's going to have to finish for now and we'll pick it up again later. But it's just giving you that softness of that tree in the background. Because it's pretty much a neat sepia, it won't flow too much either. Okay, I'm going to dry that off. If, before I do dry off, if this has started to disappear, then you can use a little bit of kitchen towel to pull through or a damp brush. A damp brush is probably preferable because you won't get a hard line. So if you rinse your brush, I'm just going to show you even though mine's okay, dab it off on the kitchen towel so it's pretty much dry but it's still a little damp you can just pull through to create that ray of sunshine. I'm, in fact, I'll do it a little bit further down here so you can see that. You have to just keep making sure you clean your brush. Okay, I'll dry that off. Okay, so I've dried that really well. I'm basically going to work down the picture in sections. So this next section is the hillside. So it's a fairly big section, so I'm just coming over twice with water just to make sure I've got plenty of water in here. And then the first colour that I'm going to pick up is a bit of raw sienna. So I've just filled my brush with water, then dabbed into the raw sienna. So the raw sienna is going to give us some nice distant greens. We don't want them to be too green. So I'll just come this side. If you follow the line of the land, 
so that you slope you'll get a nicer effect on the hillside and then rinse my brush I'm going to come into some of the cobalt blue you want these to mix to make a green what's quite nice is to let them mix on the paper you'll get much more interesting greens than in the background if you come on and you think oh that's strong blue then you need to water it down a bit before your next stroke and spread that around this, this shouldn't the blue shouldn't obliterate the raw sienna or you can come back on with a little bit more raw sienna but if in doubt load your brush with water first before you dip into your blue especially the student quality cobalt blue it can be quite potent so you've got the greens there but you've also got quite a nice tonal effect okay then I'm coming into the grey so make sure you give it a good stir Again, this is um, connecting it to the sky, bringing it into the distance. I don't want you to worry too much about detail. This is, this is in the distance. We're going to come in and create few bits just in this this section here anyway try and get a nice edge because the field's quite straight Okay, I'm going to drop down to a number six again and come into the sepia. So I want to continue through just to create this distant tree this side. then uh, there's quite a lot of trees this side as well so because we want them to feel distant I'm going to come in and start to create some hints of fine branches at the top which can be done quite nicely using an art sort of an arch in motion it is all still wet some bits of shrubbery down this bottom section as well
it's quite dark on my photograph so I can't really see the detail which is usually quite beneficial because I want this to feel like it's in the distance so I'm coming a along this bottom section and creating could be hedgerows, a bit of shrubbery trying to make it as random as I can and then I'll just add a little bit more to these trees so make sure you do do it in this order says so if you end up with a few drier trunks that doesn't matter as much you want the softness to definitely be in the the finer areas I'm just going to add a little bit more dark to this bit down here I'm going to twist upside down now just because it's easier to paint fine branches that way and I've got my line writer or rigger nice fine branches so as long as they're random it doesn't really matter so you've got the shrubbery at the bottom to connect them to and then you're just coming through just creating a few finer branches just make sure you haven't got too much water on your brush it's always easier that I find to paint downwards you get a nicer point at the top so just think random They can cross over. You'll find as the picture gets drier, you need a little bit more water to help them move through and so you should get a really nice sense of of light coming through I'm going to dry that one off okay so that's dried really nicely and we're going to come on to this next section now we're working our way down the picture so again two lots of water it's quite a big section make sure give me plenty of time my brush is nice and clean because we're coming in some fresher greens now so we're coming into the mix of lemon yellow and cobalt blue make sure you give it a really good stir because lemon yellow does tend to settle and then sweep that through what's nice is because lemon yellow's got an opaqueness to it, it tends to settle and granulate a little bit and, and look a little bit different which is nice and 
you can see them splitting out on here it's a really nice effect sitting nicely in the um, grain of the paper I'm going to come into a little bit of grey as well just bring that in this section at the front touch into a tiny bit of sepia, I've not rinsed my brush in between just bring a bit, just a bit through this is the Lincolnshire Wold so it's quite chalky hence the grey with a knitting needle or anything that's sharp that's going to indent the paper I'm just going to come through this section here and just start to create where the, the fields have been ploughed I don't want it to be too precise I'm not looking for precision lines I just want that effect and because the paper's wet it's just going to indent and then the colour's going to go and run into there and it's going to create that effect I'm just coming from this side you'll notice that I'm stopping and not going too far because it, every little thing that I'm doing like this is creating that sense of distance I don't want this detail to be too far back I just want just enough detail take a little bit more this way Okay, then I want a clean damp brush and I'm just going to come along and just wet this edge because I don't want this to be a hard edge where those grasses are coming over so I've got a wet brush I'm touching the paint and touching the paper a little bit further so I'm getting that nice Okay, so what you missed there, just on the last bit when it cut off, was I just popped a little bit more of the sepia just in there whilst it was wet, um, and just to create that shrubbery in the distance there. So I've dried this off now, and I'm quite happy with it. What I've got is a, it's an old acrylic brush that's quite splayed out, but a, any sort of small flat will do the job. I've dabbed it into the grey, and it's, it's on dry, and I just want to create a little bit more texture. So in effect I'm just creating a bit more of a plough field by just pulling it through. I'm going to do the same with a little bit of green as well. Just so that I've got that little bit more texture happening there okay I'm gonna dry that off okay so we're going to come into this front section now so plenty of water and you want this to be as bright as you can get it so I'm going to start with sap green 
Sup Greens, my freshest green. It's the only pre-mixed green that I really use. It's a lovely spring green. You want to make sure you've got this nice and strong. Don't skimp on it. Especially the student quality because it's a bit weaker. So make sure you've got plenty on there. I'm going to use a tiny bit of Gambo's yellow and just bring that in neat because I want that we're going to use the Gambo's yellow anyway when we come to the daffodils. And I want just want to get that the Gambo's is quite strong and it does get that vibrancy of that spring green. So concentrate on the base at the minute rather than the details of the, the daffodils and the petals. We're just going to get the base on. Just rinse that off. I'm going to come into a little bit of um, the cobalt blue that's left so that I can start to get some darker areas as well. Think about the shadows that you can see. Some of them are created around the, the daffodils, some are at the base of the daffodils, some are at the base of some of the tree branches. It'll give you a nice sort of shadow effect. Again, this, this cobalt blue, I'm not mixing it too much. I'm letting the, the effects happen on the paper. It's always quite interesting that way. Then I'm going to twizzle this way. You can twizzle your drawing this way for reference as well. I mean your photograph. And it's up to you what brush you want to use now. You can use whichever one. I'm going to pick up more of the sap green and I'm using a number six. And what I want to do is break this line up. Concentrate on breaking the line up this side. In the distance, you don't need to break the line up as much. But that side, you're going to need to see little bits of grasses. There's quite a lot of twigginess happening this way. So I'm just making sure that this line isn't too smooth. This side. And I'm going to come in with my line writer. Pick up some sap green again and again I'm going to continue to break this line. So I rest on my little finger, pull some of the paint that you that's already wet there different directions Remember, you don't want it to look too neat. Variety. 
too neat it'll look like it's been freshly mown then I'm going to come into the sepia and look to create some of these twiggy bits less is more and just remember to keep varying it what's really nice is if it bleeds in because that's grounding it for you with very little work so you want that to happen which is why I'm doing it at this stage So you're even creating an impression of again. So don't be too precise, concentrate on being fluid and random. You've got some of these um, thicker trunks, not really thick but you can pop those in a bit thicker just by pressing on with the, the lime writer. Don't be afraid to come across these the old sort of brambles mix up together that sort of connects it all And then if you get your round number 10, get a bit of water on that's quite clean. You can just dab in places and it will give a bit of a softness. Especially these bigger areas. And just blend a little bit through there. So that it's not all hard lines. Hard and soft edges make a picture. There's a fair amount to do in this corner. What's good is we've got the base in of the distant tree. 
so that's taken some of the work away so just concentrate on this bottom section get the sharper ones in some of you have done tree branches and trees with me so many times you'll just do this automatically some of you have done them less amounts of time so you'll be grateful to see everything in detail so I'm not going to stop I'm going to show you what I'm doing as I come through so I'm overlapping remember that the trees taper the branches Again, damp brush just in places, dabbing. Just gives a softer effect. Okay, so as you come to these bigger branches, you want to go up so I'm going to use a round number six and I'm actually going to twizzle this way try and get it so I can see everything it just makes it easier to come on and just do those bigger strokes if you twist with your round brush and roll it in your fingers you'll get a nice natural line without much effort so you sort of twist and roll doesn't have to be too precise So it gives a really nice effect. Don't obliterate everything you've done. So at this bottom section, make sure you're showing that coming through. It's very easy to get carried away and look back and think, oh, I've done too much now. Keep stepping back, keep looking less is more you can just add some thinner branches tapering off again you can roll the brush in your fingers to create that nice effect because this is a bigger area if you're wanting those wetter effects you've got to come in fairly quick so you might find that you do a few branches and then you've got to dab a little bit of water here and there whilst it's still wet then you can come back in and do a few more branches This is the bit where it could be a lot harder and it gives a good sense of distance by being like that. So it's not too needed on this section. So I'm just going to dab in a few places. I tend to just focus where the paint's still wet and quite randomly really I can see where the paint's wet and where it might make a nice effect if it's too wet it'll flow too far though so you've got to 
get the balance. Often when we do trees in class, I don't show you that much and I let you get on with it. So this is quite good for you to see how I would do the whole tree. The temptation to say stop and come back after I've done it is great because I think it must be quite boring watching but then it's also quite interesting if you don't know how to do trees. So I'm getting a really nice balance now. I need a little bit more paint. Don't skim, you want this bit to stay dark. It does tend to happen, you run out of paint and you think I'm nearly at the end. So you don't squirt any more out. But skimping's not a good idea when you're wanting these dark branches. The contrast is what's going to give you that sense of distance. The beauty as well of when you're, you're doing this and you've already wet a few sections is when you run through those sections you're getting that wetness appearing naturally on those branches because you're running through again. It's like an overlap. So all the time I'm thinking about balance, not doing too much. So I want the effect of the tree coming over, but I don't want to do too much. I keep stepping back, I keep looking and thinking, is that enough? Really all I'm doing now is adding a few dark branches, just so that I've got a nice balance. I want that light coming through. I'm happy with that. I'm going to dry that off. I've dried that off really well. I've got my trusty natural bit of sponge now. I've, I've wet it. I've wrung it out really well. I've dabbed it on some kitchen towel. And I've picked up a little bit of the lemon yellow and cobalt blue mix. So I just want to come on and just start to create a little bit of texture in this foreground. So I'm dabbing lifting the sponge up, twisting it so that it's at a different angle so that I get this random effect that looks like grass. And I'm just going to come over this section so that I'm getting that different sense of texture here. You can do the same with a little bit of the cobalt blue or a little bit of the sap green if you want as well. So I'm going to just come into the darker areas with a little bit of the cobalt blue. Just so I get that variety. And I just need a bit of water in this sap green. So I've not rinsed my sponge in between here. So I'm going to bring this towards the front, this sap green. It's a bit stronger, ready to do the daffodil leaves. 
so that I can just bring out it's that again it's just giving that bit more detail in that very front section that brings it forward everything that I'm doing bringing it forward okay can rinse that brush out so still with my um, sap bream round number 10 I'm actually going to twizzle again and just look where these daffodil leaves are and just stroke through Just make sure you put in your leaves where your daffodils are. Sounds obvious, but you don't have floating daffodils. You've got to have leaves coming around them. So this colour's fairly strong so that it's standing out. And being a bit round these lighter leaves as well. This should naturally Okay, so I just got interrupted at the very end there with the card ran out. Um so all I was saying was you can just soften in at the bottom if they don't feel like that they're, they've gelled into the shadow. So I've just come along with a damp brush before they were dry and soften those in a little bit. So just a couple of stages left now. The first one is I've got some sap green round number six with a tiny touch of cobalt blue in and I can come in to create a few more defined daffodil leaves before I take the masking fluid off so you just want a few on each section The base is already there, this is just to give you that little bit more depth. I'm just going to bring a little bit of a grassy effect, just a bit. I feel like I've got three patches in a row and I need to make them a little bit more random. So this is making them a little bit more random by popping a little bit of grass in so that they connect together. And a little bit extra this side. I'm just trying to randomise it a little bit. It's catching my eye too much, that's usually a sign that it needs to be randomised a bit. So those little sort of squiggly grassy lines are just breaking it up. I've taken a few more daffodil leaves this way as well. Just makes them a bit more random. I'm going to dry that off. OK, 
Okay, so I've dried that off and I've removed the masking fluid. If you're looking and thinking, ooh, that's a bit blah, or that's not looking very much like grasses, at that point you can come through with a bit of the green to, to actually get rid of, if you've say for instance got thick grasses you can come down either side with a bit of green, if these are too blobby you can come through with a little bit of green just to break them up and then dry that off um, before you come in with the yellow. So I've basically got Gambo's yellow and I'm just dotting in, it's pretty much neat. There's a bit of water on my brush. An odd bit of white will look nice, it'll look like it's it's a light highlighting on the flower so don't worry about capturing every single bit. And don't worry about it looking like a daffodil. And then you've got the gambo's yellow just coming on to these ones that are really light here. Just run that through. Okay, so that's a nice spring scene. See you next week.